verse nun gemo. Big gap from beginning to to where we are. Sure, sure, sure. What can I tell you? Big, big parrot, right? Is it one of the largest parking? What color you should know? This is 56 sukin. Is that large for a parrot? Is it the largest? So it goes like this. Are you with us, sir? Yes, sir. My sir. Producer. Television producer. No? No? <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, sir. Right. Good. Uh, chapter 33, verse, let's say, 53. 33, 53, and let me try. 33, 33. It's hard to get started here. You shall take position. Okay, yes, yes, sir. So after after discussing the first two psukim, three psukim before this, it's talking about going to the land of Israel and emptying it of idol worship, which we decided we would not discuss. Uh, the chapter, uh, verse... 53 continues and says, Behold, Rashtem at the Aretz, we shaptem, we shaptem ba. And you shall, he says, take possession, Morashtem, I guess from the word Morasha, from the word inheritance, you shall possess it, you shall inherit the land. Uh, there, there is some dual meaning to that word if you want to translate it because it's not the Yarashtem, but the Horashtem. It could be that you will eliminate other people from the land. Yes. Take possession, dispossess others. Yeah. yeah, okay, anyway, take possession is the way he puts it, yeah. the land. And then the next words are the difficult ones. Vi shabtenba, and you shall live in it. In her. Ki lachem natati et aret, because to you I have given this land, la reshetota, to inherit it. Now, La Reshet and the whole Rashtem, you notice it's captioned on the two sides of the verse. That's why people want to say that La Reshet, you shall do this because I have given it to you to do so. I mean, that would be one of the ways to trust it, right? You shall take possession of it and inherit it, bequeath it to your children, you know, take possession of it in, in, in perpetuity. Not just like buying a house in Muncie, because that's not a Rashtem, right? Because I, I'm, it's not going to be mine for permanence in my family, for permanence in my life. I'm going to be gone. Nobody will ever remember that this house was a yes house. Okay, but, and but the house will belong to to maybe, you know, Alexander Metapolitus from Greece and that would be his land. So it's just something that doesn't belong to the Jewish people. The a land the land of Israel is taking, you take possession of the land of Israel, it is taking part of the, in the national homeland. Yes, sir. So but that part. means that the land may be uh, an acre, whatever the size of, of my land belongs to me. If I buy, I, if I buy this piece of land in Jerusalem or whatever place, belong to me, or it's like a, a leasing or something like that? Well, it's, it depends where. You're asking the question about Shemitah and about, uh, the, let's, let's put it this way, all the land in Israel was divided among the tribes yes. when they first came to possess it. Right. And every one of those parcels that came to a tribe then was divided among families. Mm -hmm. And those families, that piece of land was theirs. Mm -hmm. Was theirs. And it would be inherited by their children after them. Mm -hmm. Good. Even if they sold it, assuming it's not but let's say in general, if you see you'll sell land, open land in Israel, it comes back to you after 50 years. Because the Yobel suggests that the Hashem said that these lands shall be forever in the families that they were had. So, yeah. But uh, let, it, we're, we're getting a little off the topic because the question here now is not inheriting the land in pieces, uh, and, and your question is a good question, but now they're talking about the second phrase. And you shall, no, the second one. The whole Rashtem you shall possess it and settle. 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 Dwell. Live in it. Right? 
Vyashatva literally means to sit, to sit. Vashara means to sit. Okay, so but it's an expression, right? Mm -hmm. To dwell. So the question is, you will see in a moment, whether you translate that as a commandment, take a look, right? You shall possess it, that's command, that's a command. Vyashatva could be that once you possess it, you will be able to uh, live in it. Right. Or, the command, or it might be a commandment. I want you to possess it, and I want you to live there. Right? That this would be one of the 613 mitzvot in the Torah, like putting on tefillin, like keeping the Shabbat, like eating matzah and dressa, you must live in Eretz Israel. But I'm saying you shall demolish all the yeah. places. Yeah. That's a command. Yeah. Here. Yes. Oh, it actually does uh, two sentences before. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. But we're talking about the possession, the, the living in the land of Israel. So if you look at the Ramban on page, I'm sorry, you had a comment. Mm -hmm. um, Ramban says yes. a little bit um, vague. Two, two things here, and then the more rational is ours, and the shadow of Yes. Which which is the missing thing? Right. The question is whether he feels that those are two separate commandments, is it one, or is the Horashtim a an enabler to settle in it, which is the Mitzvah. We'll say, okay, maybe he will explain, right? So uh, it, it is in page Shin Lamed Hay. First, take possession and set the you And then you must live in it, or? Live in it. Okay, so, yeah. because I could take possession of it and live in the right? Yeah, Mansi, I wouldn't think. That's, but okay, it's not bad. Nun Gimbo. So we're talking about verse 53, right? Mm -hmm. So the Ramban says, he quotes this pasuk, and he says, Al da'ati, according to my opinion, zu mitzvah This is a, a positive oh, commandment in the Torah. Yetzaveh otam sheyeshu ba'aretz. He commands them to live in the land. V'yirshu ota. You notice that he talks about that as basically combined one mitzvah. Borash tem v'yishab Good. You can't settle it unless you take possession of it. Okay, it's fine. Right? And he explains why. Right? I want you to live in it. Key, because because I have given it to you, not for nothing. I haven't given it to you to sell. I haven't given it to you to boast about. I have given it to you to, to dwell. To, to take possession of it and to live there. I mean, that's what Laresh right? To bequeath it to your children. Right? It's interesting because the Torah not always tells you the reasons for a mitzvah. This one, this would be a, a reason. I want you to live there because I gave it to you to live there. Right? And, right? And, Veloyim Asub and Achalat Hashem. And I, since I gave it to you, I don't want you to show yourself ungrateful or hating or despising that which I gave you. Right? If I give you a present and you spawn is spurn means to reject yeah to reject it to abuse so if i give you a present a nice piece of uh, crystal you don't really like it so you put it away in the basement and I never see it again right but so uh, yeah right. okay what you should do in fact is tell me that you don't like this one can you return it to exchange for something that you like but you couldn't do that with the hair of Israel, right okay and even though there have been some jews who said this is a land has no oil has almost no water what kind of a land is he giving us? We want uh, Thanks, Babylon. What? Thanks, Miss. Sorry, Yeah, there are a lot of good lands in the in the country. Switzerland, a lot of uh, glaciers and water and lakes, right? So he, he has given it to you, and you must and you should not reject it. The, the gift, the gift of God. The iluya leal datchem datan lalecha dikposh eret shinar or it's a or it's a sure. If they finally, you know, they have it in mind, you know what, we want to conquer some other land, right? Land of Shinar, land of Ashur, whatever, which are nearby lands. Instead, instead of, I suppose, sham, and to live there instead, they will be violating the commandment of God. This is the land. No, this is where he's commanding them to live. Now, that would sound like to the Ramban that when we are capable I don't know, he doesn't elaborate very much. If you're not capable and 
you are dispersed by an enemy from your land and you end up being in Abel, right? or you end up being in Muncie because you have no choice, then the Ramban would say, you know, you have to hope sometimes that you can't do a mitzvah now, but you will do a mitzvah later. When you are able, you will do a mitzvah, right? If you have no house, for example, and you're living on the street, you don't have a mezuzah mitzvah because you don't have a house. So that's the way it is, right? But that doesn't mean the mitzvah doesn't exist. When, as soon as you can get a house, you should put on a mezuzah, right? <coughs> so if you're unable to live in the land of Israel because of circumstances, political, dangerous circumstances that you're not able to go, well, then you wait and hope. But when you're capable of going, right, and you live in, in uh, Colombia, and you end up going to the United States, and somebody tells you, you know, I can give you a ticket to go to Eretz Israel and you'll be able to live there. So the Ramban would say, you really should go. Right? Just like he would say to me, right? I was born in the land of Israel. My father took me to, to Montreal and then to New York, and then I got married, and then I went into a profession, and then I uh, And I even have an apartment in Israel. What am I doing here? Right, according to the Ramban, part of the mitzvah. You could ask a question about whether there's a mitzvah on individuals or on a mitzvah on the whole nation. I don't know too many mitzvot on a nation. You know, that they shall dwell in it. Does he speak to individuals? Most of the time, right? I mean, no. No. to build a Beit HaMikdash, for example, is a, is a, a collective mitzvah. Right? It's not a mitzvah on every individual. This is not a collective because it's, it's in plural form. Although, uh, I mean, it's not clear, right? Because there are many of that are written in the plural. You, group, should you. Is it possible that this one does apply to a group because it's not an easy thing for an individual to accomplish? This sounds like a war that's going to take place and they're going to accomplish the possession of the land. It's a group, right? It's, it's the nation that's going to do that. So you can ask a lot of questions about what he means. What does he mean by the mitzvah? Is it individual? Is it in all places, in all times? So then he goes on to say, And there have been, what he thinks, emphasis or even exaggeration by our rabbis on the importance, the, 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 the critical importance of living in Eretz Israel. For example, saying, a person must not is not allowed to leave it. If you're living in Eretz Israel, you must not leave it. Even to make money or to whatever, you must not leave it. And they, they have said there's a special, uh, a special law of marriage, a marital law between uh, husband and wife, <clears throat> between husband and wife, that if a, if a husband wants to go to Israel and the wife says, no, no, I don't want to go, my parents live in Muncie, I want to be near them, I don't want to go to Israel. So that is considered a moredet, a woman who is uh, un- a yeah, rebellious wife who does it, who can lose her ketubah, who he can force her to accept a, a divorce because she is inappropriate in her rejection. Right? She could say, "I don't want you to work this job, or I don't want to live in this neighborhood, or I don't want to." You know, can say a lot of things. I am arguing with you about the school we're going to send the children to, right? But if the husband wants to go to Israel, that mitzvah overrides any objections. The wife, the wife should go along. Same thing with the wife who says she demands to go. The husband has to do it as well. Ha'isha, she, now it's she, she should go. She should go. Yeah. And the husband should go if the wife says to go. Same thing. She can she get like a man again. Yeah, she can demand again. Yeah. says, oh, the, the next words. And also the man is considered to be a rebellious, inappropriate rejection if the wife wants to go to Israel and to she, and he does not, right? The Kanit Sabine Bitsvanazu. It was this sentence that they're talking about when they hype up the importance of going to Eretz Israel to live in it, that it's a mitzvah. They're talking about this sentence. 
but you must do that, right? Ki akatuba ze hi mitzvah tasei. This sentence is a positive commandment. Ve yachzir mitzvah azu bim komot rabim. And there are many places where the mitzvah is repeated. For example, bo'u urishu et ha'aretz, which was mentioned in Devarim, in Deuteronomy 1.8. Oh, I there are a couple of footnotes here about various sentences in which, for example, the Muradli, when Hashem said to them, go and possess the land of Israel, and then the Muradli come and say, we should not go, that was a violation of the commandment of God. One of the examples in which these are repeated, right? Um, and they didn't listen. In the case of Mount Jesus or in the case of Yahushua? No, no, right? The Raga, oh, the, 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 the spies. There was a... Uh, so these uh, sentences uh, tell you at all Hashem that this is not a promise. Moses to go up, he said, to send the spies. Yeah, but there's no one who's sending the spies. The spies came back and said we shouldn't go. And that was the rebellion. We can't possess it. We can't conquer it. We can't. Uh, we don't go. I shouldn't have commanded them. We're going to Israel, and they said we're not going. Yeah. But why uh, isn't it considered uh, freedom of um, speech, freedom of thought, freedom of whatever you think? I still maybe they really felt that way. <laughs> God says, God says, you must go to the land of Israel. I'm going to take you there. Right? And they went and they said, well, it's not practical. We won't be able to conquer it. And Kalev and Yoshua says, what are you saying? Hashem has taken us out of Egypt. He will, just like he destroyed Sichon and Og, he will also take care of them. Just like he took care of Mitzrayim, he'll take care of them. We must go. We should go. They said, no, we won't be able to defeat them. Defeat them. And the people who were en masse rebelled and said, you want to kill us, you want to take us into this land to kill us, and so on. I mean, oh, freedom of speech is a very interesting, I mean, I don't think we have freedom of speech in all cases. For example, a person cannot curse God. It's a, it's a, it's a violation of one of the cardinal that's in the Torah, parents, or his parents, or say, Lashon Hara. Slander and so on. So anyway, anyway, so so uh, he says yes that those are all the mitzvot that are uh, derived from this pasuk. Aval Rashi Kuresh, and if you see, you have Rashi written there. He says Rashi on this pasuk, ve'horashtem et aretz, ve'horashtem otam mi yoshveha, as v'yishavtem ba. Ve'horashtem. Remember, I told you the two ways of looking at the words ve'horashtem. The first word, take possession. The Horashtem, he says, is to dispossess others, mm -hmm. to take it away from somebody else. And then you will be able to sit there. Once you empty the land of the other people, you will be able to live there. Correct? Some people will say that, Rabbi Kahani would say, once upon a time, that when you take over the West Bank, what you should do is first dispossess this place and clean out all the Palestinians from it so that you'll be able to live there. Because if you don't do that, you'll never be able to live there. Right? Because you will have always this kind of conflict. He, he was famous for that opinion. Well, I don't know. Right, right in the sense of what? Right in the sense of ethical or right in the sense of practical? Practical advice? Right in the religious. Topic, but no, it's practical. No, no, it could have been practical. They could have had people under. But that's not the, the question. Is whether it is the right thing to do, or whether okay. long discussion, <laughs> long discussion. But but Rashi is trying to say that at the time of Joshua, when they came into the land, and God said to them, "And you will go in. You should go in, and you should take away all the idol worshiping." And according to Rashi, and you shall dispossess, empty the land of the other people, so that you will be able to do all in it. Not as a mitzvah, but you must do all in it. You have to do these things that I'm telling you, 
in order that you should be able to live in it. Yeah. Not that it's a mitzvah. Sure, we uh, whatever, or let them, or to have them leave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, really should, you have to call. Yeah, sure, I gave it to them three, yeah. three, 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 yeah. three options. Yeah, so I mean, they could leave this. Vim love, and if, according to Rashi, and if you do not dispossess them, lo tuchul it kayam you won't be able to survive there. Masha pi Rashi hu ha'ikar. But I disagree with Rashi. He says, right, I think that the sentence means you shall possess it, not dispossess. You shall possess it, and that you must live there as a commandment. And Rashi says that it is a enabling thing, right? You will be able to live there if you do the things that I tell you about dispossessing it and eradicating Kabbalah. Okay. Now Rashi lived in uh, southern France. In southern France, so, yeah. Where we live in Spain, northern Spain. Yeah, not that far. But um, so what did Rashi say? And he said that when he said I come to live there, um, that it wasn't around fine. Why, why didn't he make all effort, all sorts of efforts? The Ramban went to Israel. Yeah, but the so, end of the Israel. Yeah. The Ramban actually ended up going to Israel. Of course, it was that in those days you could have a lot of excuses. Not even that my excuses, right? He had many better excuses, right? Because it was not safe. It was not owned by the Jewish people, right? There was no Jewish army. There was, a, in fact, uh, he went, and when he came to Yerushalayim, he couldn't find the minyan. So that, mm -hmm. do you believe that? He had to, be, he had to find people who might try to come by donkey all the way from Hebron or from other places to get together a little shul. He started the shul, right? Yeah. And he was there for a while, and he went to Akko for a while. He had a, he had a rough time. And it could be dangerous too. But he did, he did actually make every effort to go. So, and there was another, who was it? Is it the lady who, who came to Israel? Yeah, well, yeah. And he was killed, right? He was killed. He went to the hotel and uh, some horseman came by and uh, smashed him. So, uh, they, they felt very connected. Whether they felt it was a mitzvah, a positive commandment to all of them or not, but they certainly felt very connected to try to go yearn for the land of Israel. So, uh, and he, and so, it's, by the way, it's along Rabbi Hersher Schechter had a whole shiur that's on tape somewhere on whether it is, what, what the difference of opinion among the Rambam and other poskim about whether they agree with the Rambam that it's a commandment or whether they agree with Rashi that it's a you know, you could, you should, but it's not a command. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and Rambam, I think, he felt it must be not. Mm -hmm. Not a it's like I say, one of the things. You know, he says, I sign words, I sign yet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I sign The Rambam. Mm -hmm. Yes? I'm signing as a sinner but live, but because I live abroad. I, I live outside Egypt. I live in Egypt. Right? I live in Egypt. <laughs> I live in Egypt. And that makes me a sinner because I should be in it. So we should run this movie, we should sign that. It will be a reminder of what our objective is. We sign our emails. Sinner, you would. Uh, Could have told the Sultan, I'm going to Israel, and if you need my medical advice, come and see me. Yeah. Um, then he says uh, that we're talking about the Hanifah, the, the, the scorn of Eretz Israel, in chapter 35 33. 35 33, there is a sentence, 35 33, Shin according to the Ramban. 
ולארץ לא יחופר לדת אשר שופכת כי אם בדף של כל. The land cannot be atoned, atoned. Cannot, be, cannot be fixed up for blood that was spilled in it except by the, by the blood of the person who spilled it. Right? That's what's going to fix the land somehow. What's, what's going to... It's a very mysterious sentence, right? The land becomes ruined, becomes corrupted, becomes spoiled, becomes uh, contaminated, whatever you want to say, whatever the word means, mm -hmm. contaminated, by the blood that was spilled in it, right? And it is calling out for justice, the land. The land is calling out for justice. By the way, this is not only in the Torah, I don't know. Uh, there's the, the there's mythology, Greek mythology, in which uh, the land is calling out for the blood. But Hashem I, spoke to Cain and Abel. Right, the land by the Tzoneket, Tzodant, Achichat Tzoakim, Elai Mina Adama, right, your blood of your brothers shouting out sure. to me from the land. Yeah. Okay, so we have to understand what is Tachanifa and what is the land got to do with it. I mean, I understand you have to do justice, right? So he's going to explain that a little bit in, in Shin Mem, right? Lo Tachnibu Daret, Nipnei Shamar Tchilav Ayu Eile Lachem Lechukat Mishpat Lodorot Echem Bechol Toshvot Echem, Shin Page in yeah. Because he had said before that these laws shall be for you all generations in every place that you live, right? For example, justice, right? To do justice. A person steals, he has to pay twice as much, and da 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 da, right? Because that said that those just laws have to apply everywhere, the Dorotechem in all generations, the Chol Moshvotechem means in every place that you dwell, even in Paris. The Jewish people have ju have just laws that they have to execute, they have to, to have to fulfill. This is so you are mishpatim. Well, let me just think. Right. You might think because these laws apply everywhere the Jews happen to live. She'il, you might think therefore that these laws no hagim gam bechutz alaretz, that these laws also apply outside the land of Israel. For example, to execute the murderer, right? He wants to repeat this um, relationship between justice and the land of Israel as something special because of the dwelling of the Shekinah there. Mm -hmm. It is true that you have to have justice in Muncie, right? Mm -hmm. But injustice in Eretz Israel is worse. Is worse. Why? Because God is dwelling there. He's going to try to explain. And he and he's here, and he warned us. Shelo tachnifota velo mitameota. That's a little bit similar, right? He's saying yeah. that we should not defile it, right? Not, not contaminate it. V'inyana chanufa, who hane emeret bakvalot. There, there is a where is it? Ninety-five in Tvarim, in Deuteronomy, in one of the curses, in one of the uh, you know the calumnies that Hashem warns the Jewish people if they violate his his covenant. It says zera rav. You see, one of the curses that happens is what's going to happen to the land, right? Not just you, right? Not just the people, but the land is not going to be able to support you. It's not going to, you're going to put a lot of seeds and the land will not give you enough to, to support you. You're going to plant a lot of vineyards and you will not have wine. Zeitim yulecha, you will have trees, olive trees, but shemen you will not make, you will not be able to get oil. Kol eitzcha upri admatcha yirashat slalzal. And all of the fruit trees, right? And all of the trees will be inherited by the slalzal is probably, uh, or dead, probably, uh, what you call it? Locusts. Locusts, okay? Ki kol chanufa asot hepeth now he's going to tell you how the etymology was. I told you it was flattery, right? Mm -hmm. Flattery is what Hanifa is, right? Mm -hmm. So every Hanifa, in the root of it, is to make something opposite, to make something appear the opposite of what it is, right? I tell this woman, she's pretty ugly, right? And she's not very smart. But I tell her, you know, you're the, the smartest, the, the most beautiful woman I ever saw, right? Because I want to take advantage of her, right? right? So, I am trying to make believe that something is different from what it is, right? So why, why, and, and that he says is like you're doing to the land, 
והוא עונש בארץ בעבודת הרעה ובשפיכות דמים וגילוי עריות, כמו שנאמר, הלא חנפת חנף הארץ. There are three things that corrupt the land. One is עבודה זרה, שפיכות דמים, ספילינג ואינס ובלוד, and גילוי עריות, adultery and other sexual perversions. כמו שנאמר, as it is said, 99, this is a quote from Yerbiyahu, which is for three weeks, we're in the middle of it, this is almost literally the appropriate topic, right? Because he said he accused the Jewish people of of making Hanifa, of contaminating the land with these actions, right? Ve'ha'aretz chanfa tachat yoshveha, and the land, so there's another passage, Yeshayahu, the land has become corrupted through, under the ones who dwell in it. Ve'tachnifi eres v'znotayet, and another one, you corrupted the land with your adultery. And so, why is it like Hanifa? The land is a holy land. Right? The land is a holy land. The land has Shrina dwelling. And you behave in it or do things on it as though this was a land like, uh, you know, like 47th Street. Right? Right? Like, you know, the, the red light district in, uh, in uh, Amsterdam. You know what I mean? Those, uh, you, so you behave on it. It's a holy land. You walk on the Beit HaMikdash land, for example, Chasu Shalom, right? And you, be, and you pretend, you behave as though well, it's something else is nothing, right? So it's the opposite of Hanifa. <laughs> when, I, when I want to compliment that ugly, stupid woman, I say something positive, and she's really not. Here, you're talking about the land that is positive, and you are behaving in a way that's yeah, it. changing its, its uh, the reality of it, uh, your observation of it. So it's the opposite, but that's what he says is the nature of Hanifa. You are doing something to make something different than it is. To pretend that something is different than it is. Maybe good, maybe bad. Either way. Right. But obviously, in this case, it's bad, right? So then he says, Vinyana uh, Tuma. And we said, you remember, there's a passage that says, you corrupted it and defiled it. So he says, Anai Tuma Shetiye Haaretz Tmea Velo Yishkon Ba Kavod Hashem Biyod Ba Dam Naki Shalotit Kaper Vodam Torofo. The, the real, what we mean by defiling, for example, if something is tame, I um, cannot walk in, right? I shouldn't walk in because I will become defiled. So he's saying by comparison, the word is being used about the land because God himself will not come into a place that's defiled, tame. And therefore, when you defile the land by not doing justice in it and taking care of the murders that occur in your land, then God leaves the land. God will not live it. He finds it um, unclean, right? Defiled. And of course, once God leaves the land, then there's no longer any protection of the land of Israel. And there's no reason why the land of Israel should survive. I mean, if, you, if you look at the land of Israel in the middle of the geography that it now exists, right? So for the last, uh, you know, 60 years, there's no reason why it should survive. All the nations of the world uh, were against it in the, in the Middle East and they could have overrun them. But the reason that it survives is because Hashem is dwelling in it, promised to the Jewish people, and somehow we survive. Those are not the temple It seems not. It seems not. There is soil as a holy land without uh, the temple as well. Um, so, most people say actually exists for the land as well, by the way. It's a big discussion about whether that applies only to the place on which the land, on the, which, which the temple was, or Eretz Israel itself. Anyway, right, and we see three, one of the uh, early um, interpreters of the Torah, they said, Lo tachnifet Eretz has raised huzu hazara lachanifi. What do you mean? This is actually a warning to those who would flatter somebody. What is that? Right? Some people have said that the word Hanifa here is really flattering. What is it? Who is the one who's going to pay? So flattering is the one who's like a prize? Yeah, who's going, to want, who's going to be the one who will offer $10 million uh, for his son? You just 
my son killed somebody and you just found him guilty, but I'll give you $10 million. Let my son off. Who is that kind of a guy? He'll be a billionaire, right? The mayor of the town, the biggest businessman in the society, the one who hires 10,000 people, you know. I want you to let my son off. So you, the judges, will be tempted, right, to say, oh, you're such an important person, you have to bend over backwards to let this son off, right? That would be flattering. That would be Hanifa of the real classic type, right? It makes believe that this guy is okay just because he's important, or because he's powerful, or because he's rich, right? Once you do that, you will also corrupt the land. So, right? so this Hanifa is really Hanifa, flattering, favoritism. Oh, even bites or something. Yeah, really. Knowing the material sense, either that material sense or or in a verbal or kind of attitude sense, right? So, yeah. well, let this guy off. He's very important, right? Like they wanted to, people accused uh, the Justice Department about uh, Bobby Kennedy when he, uh, when he uh, was driving with a car, drunk probably. This girl, what's her name, drowned in the river, and he. He maybe ran away and maybe didn't run away. Anyway, they didn't want to investigate too much because, uh, I mean, he's a senator of yes. Massachusetts, a very important guy. Many people accuse the, the, the justice system of not really being thorough there. If it would have been somebody else, it would have been much more investigated. Okay, so that's Hanifa, actually, in literal terms, Hanifa, right? Uh, okay. Plain favoritism, flattering people that are perhaps good. Okay. So you see, anyway, that uh, there's somehow there's some spiritual, mystical relationship between justice and the land. Right? Hashem dwelling in it, Hashem dwelling in it makes it capable of reacting to injustice in a much more, uh, which is a concrete sense, right? Hashem will actually leave the land. There won't be any rain, and you won't be able to survive here because you corrupted it. It's a, it's a, not the same as doing wrong elsewhere. Doing wrong in Israel is, is actually corrupting the very land in which God has dwelt. Right? You wouldn't be going to the shul and just you know, stop moving around, right? The shul is there as a sacrifice. Right? So there is a place for God's dwelling. So by behaving in a certain way there, it's much different than living here. That's why some people are afraid to live in Israel. Mm -hmm. If you walk around, you're much more responsible. I think that since justice has to be done everywhere, why does it talk about the land? The answer to the land, because when they because were the more. in the land, they were outside of Jerusalem, but not outside of the whole land. I mean, in Syria, the border of Syria, or whatever. If Jews go outside of Israel, they still are bound by the same justice, the same Mishpatim. Yeah, but in order to to make the land clean, kosher, so um, all the execution, because they were executed because of murderers or whatever people commit a sin, very rare, very rare. So, yeah, but they were executed outside of their soil. So, no, what's in no, in their soil? So, yeah. No, he didn't say that they execute them outside. He said if you live in outside of their soil. So, if you live already outside of Israel, and somebody does a murder, then you need the same laws of justice apply as well outside. No, no, not, not that you, yeah, you misunderstood. It didn't mean that you execute somebody if you just if you live in Israel and you, or you find somebody guilty, you don't take him out to see the Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, it's 
five after. Then there's a little tefillah. Look at the little tefillah at the very end. I don't know, it's a poem, but maybe it's nice. Nishlam Sefer Pekudim with the Very, very handy. There's a, like a poem to write, right? Uh, we have finished the uh, book of the Pekudim, of the numbers. Because remember the first book, the Bamidbar, we call it the book of the desert, but, uh, but uh, really the first commandment there was to count the people. Right, in the desert. So he calls it Sefer It's a book about the flags of the multitude of the Jews. And to God, the God of hosts, Shiva Kahoda praise and thanks. Let me and to hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of thanks. Just as he has done for our forefathers, great things and wonderful things, we shall bring quickly in our day an end to, I guess, ultimate the miracles. The Beit Hamikdash the Holy Shkot, and the. The side rooms of the Mishka, of the Beit Hamikdash, you know, all the rooms. and that it should serve as a, well, a barrier before our, you know, improper desires. Viachin Sham Beit David Kisaot, and he shall prepare there in Yerushalayim for the house of David. Veinenu Raot, while our eyes can see. In our lifetime, the Huber Achama, the Nakenu Minister, to be pushed, and he with his mercy will cleanse us of all un, un, you know, improper deeds that we did uh, in, uh, in, in, I guess, without even knowing, and with all mistakes or errors that we have done. We are in the Torah, Tony Flaot, and may he show us in his Torah great wondrous things. Amen, King Yeraton. May it so be his will. That's quite a few lot. Not bad either on top of it. Not bad on top of it also. So, not bad. Not bad. It's not a bad timing because we have about two minutes before we